In this video, we will look at threshold regressions. My name is Ngozi Adeleye, your facilitator. This video covers the status specifics regarding threshold panel data analysis. In STATA, the threshold analysis is performed using the XTN red syntax developed by CO Kim and Kim 2019, henceforth referred to as CO et al. If you are using that syntax, the threshold variable is listed immediately after the dependent variable in this way. So the dependent variable comes first, followed by the threshold variable and other regressors. The threshold variable can also appear twice among the independent variables. So in that case, the threshold variable must be written twice, as you can see in this example. What if you have endogenous independent variables? All you need to do is to invoke the endogenous option and put those variables in this bracket. You can see an example here. So YQX1 and the endogenous regressor is included here. In STATA, the dynamic model is the default, where you have the lag dependent variable automatically generated. Also, by default, instruments are the independent variables themselves for an exogenous independent variable and deeper lag. So by default, STATA uses um, instruments which are the independent variables themselves. You can also use additional instruments by invoking the instrument option. But remember that the variable that you want to use as an instrument must be time variant and it must have no missing value. Also, you can specify a static model. Recall that the default model is dynamic. So unlike the dynamic model, the static model does not automatically include the lagged value of the dependent variable as an independent variable. You can also include kink as an option if you want to estimate a kink model. I've already explained this one when I said in case you have an endogenous variable, you only have to include them in the variable list that is in the parenthesis. The endogenous variable must be excluded from the list of independent variables before the comma. That is, this is how you specify the syntax. You put the endogenous variable here. So you will not see any x2 here because x2 in this case is assumed to be endogenous. So this is not the right way to specify. This one here is very wrong. So do not specify it this way. In this way, you can see here now that I have X2 here as exogenous and X2 here as endogenous. This is very, very wrong. So this is the correct way to specify whenever you have an endogenous variable. So if you want to use more instruments, like I said before, you invoke this option. Stata also uses the grid number. The default is 100. And the grid option here determines the number of grid points that Stata will use to estimate the threshold. By default, it's 100, so you can decide to specify an integer. You can also use the trim rates. By default, the trim rate in Stata is 0 0.4. And what does the trim rate do? What it does is to construct the grid, that is, it is a rate used to construct the grid in estimating the threshold, R. R is used in the stata output to capture the threshold parameter. We also have the H underscore zero option, which by default is 1.5. It determines the bandwidth for the covariance matrix. So by default, 1.5. You may also want to have a bootstrap iterations to test for linearity in the model. So when you have the boost uh, option, by default, the boost is zero. You will have the results for the bootstrapping iterations. All these papers I've listed here, some of them used uh, these options that I just um, expanded on. For instance, Hansen in this paper is solely on the kink model within the threshold framework. So you may want to read that. Bolariwa also used the kink analysis in their paper. Uh, this was the CO et al. paper number four. 
which is the workhorse for the XCN Red syntax. So I will encourage you to pick one or two of these papers and just read to sharpen your understanding about threshold analysis. Thank you so much for watching. I have just put you through the status specifics regarding the XTN Red syntax. I am interested in your feedback. Please leave them in the comment section below and kindly inform your friends, colleagues, and institutions to enroll into the Crunch Econometrics paper series.